This is a screencast about Xubuntu, or Zubuntu, however you would like to say it. Xubuntu is a flavor of Ubuntu that features the XFCE desktop, which typically requires um, fewer system resources, a less fast processor, less RAM, things like that, and is therefore um, really popular for users of, of older machines. So if you're trying to get Ubuntu onto a, a lower spec machine, older components, um, this is a great one to try out. You can find their webpage at xubuntu.org, which of course features all the different uh, CDs that you can download in the usual way. For this demo, I'll, I'll use the uh, 7.04, which is the uh, Feisty Fawn edition. Uh, you can choose which country best uh, suits your downloading needs. In this case, since I'm in the U.S., I'll, I'll choose the United States. And once you've gotten into that site, uh, you can choose what kind of CD you want to download. Now, it kind of depends, and Xubuntu being for lower spec machines, you may want to think about this for a moment. If it's a very, very old machine, uh, you might need what's called the alternate install CD. Uh, for the for the less old machines, you can go ahead and get the, uh, the normal desktop CD. But um, if you're not, if you really feel like this is a pre 2000 ish machine, um, and you still want to try to to get Ubuntu on there. Uh, you'd be amazed at how well Ubuntu runs on these old, on very, very old machines. But sometimes it is better to go ahead and get the alternate CD, which has, um, which has a few more options about installation, which we'll actually we will go into in this screencast. Um, so I'm going to get both actually, but we'll start out with with the normal installation. Um, so downloading this and burning it to CD is covered in previous screencasts. Um, not necessarily X Ubuntu, but the uh, the normal Ubuntu, and so it's it's kind of um, it's it's something I won't cover here because um, there's a previous screencast about this, one on burning it with Nero and and one on burning it on some other application uh, out of Windows if you're switching over. Uh, so I'll get out of that and I'm going to reboot the system so that we can um, go from a from a fresh boot uh, with a whole new install. So um, here we've rebooted the system, and this is the first screen that you'll you'll see. Uh, you've got a couple of different options. There's the start or install Xubuntu. If you just want to try it out, if this is your first time uh, trying out Ubuntu, or if you're just curious about the XFCE desktop, you can you can always run it off the CD. It'll obviously run a little bit slower than than it would if it was on your hard drive because it is reading everything from a CD but it's a good way to experience the environment. You can start Xubuntu in what's called the safe graphics mode, which basically takes the uh, lowest possible um, catch-all uh, graphic mode so that no matter what screen you have, it will, it will show you a graphic. What I typically do is I just hit F4, and you can choose from the different uh, displays um, from that menu that you're seeing now. Uh, the, the one I've had most success with is 800 by 600 with, this is very important, 16-bit uh, depth. Uh, sometimes if you try something higher, like a 24-bit depth or certainly a higher resolution, uh, if your monitor is too old, it just it won't be recognized. Um, so that's what I typically do. And having set that, I then um, I start the disk. Um, now, if you want to not do this, if you change your mind, or if you've accidentally left the CD in the drive, and you just want to boot from your hard disk, you can boot from the hard drive. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start up off the CD. We've set our resolution, so we hit that, and it loads the Linux kernel, and it boots up the system a little bit, something like this. Uh, now, understand that on older spec machines, um, the CD is going to attempt to auto-detect the configuration. And one of the main things it needs to auto-detect, especially on the older systems, is the monitor and what kind of graphic ability you've got. So if you're not, if you're not having a, a good uh, result with the, the main CD, then you might want to try the alternate CD because it's a, it's, it's a lot easier of an install. It requires a lot less 
well, it's a harder install, but it requires less of your computer. So this is the main XFCE desktop, and this is running off the CD, so it's a little bit slower than it would be. Um, but it's, you know, it's got a typical, it's got a Thunar file manager, rather than like Nautilus, or uh, if you're coming from PC, the Windows Explorer. Um, and uh, you can play around with it and kind of explore what it does have, and then once you've decided that uh, you like what you see, uh, you can just click on the install. And the default, uh, or the main installer with Xubuntu is really quite friendly. It's very graphical, um, easy to easy to navigate through, and it's almost self-explanatory, so I'll kind of go through it quickly, um, the first screen. And again, you just have to keep in mind that since it's running off of a CD, it's not touching the hard drive at all, everything's being read, um, you know, just as fast as the CD can turn, so it's not it's not as fast as off of a hard drive. Um, so here's the list of your language that you want to install. You choose that from the uh, from the menu, and then you can choose your time zone. Lots of different time zones for uh, wherever you are. Choose New York. Now this is important because this is your your keyboard. Um, so you can choose whatever keyboard you've got. And now it's going to scan for hard drive and look at the hard drive. Now the hard drive I'm installing this onto um, pretty much is just a completely new hard drive. I mean, it's not new, but I wiped it clean of any kind of system. Um, and since it is an older machine, it's a very small hard drive, and I'm just going to go ahead and use the whole drive. Um, and I think typically if you're doing Xubuntu, that's probably what you're going to be doing uh, because you're probably not running like Windows on the other partition, you know, on the hard drive with any great success. So you might as well just, at least for me, when I'm doing this, typically I just go ahead and go for the whole hard drive and that makes it easy. But if you need more information about partitioning hard drives and things like that, um, there is a separate screen cast on that kind of stuff so you can do that. So now on this setup, we're, we're setting up the initial user. The first thing it'll ask you for is your name, and that'll be the name that you want uh, the system to know you as. The um, the other name for lo your login is the actual login name. You can choose a password. I'm just choosing some really basics, uh, really basic stuff um, here because um, I'm, this is just a demo machine. And now it's ready to install, and it'll give us a little summary. So it's it's your it's your chance to kind of look over what you've chosen, make sure that's really what you want. And up until now, nothing's actually been written to the hard drive, so you can still bail out. But now I've hit install, so now it's it's uh, starting to process the installation. And it'll take a while, even though it's a small hard drive. Um, you know, it's going to install a, a fair amount of of software, and it's, it's got to erase the drive first, and all kinds of stuff. So. Um, I'm going to f sort of fast forward us through this process. And so far we've had really good luck with this. Um, so on, on really, really old systems, um, this, this just might not work out for you. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there's no hope. Uh, and, and in a short time we'll do the alternate install. And you'll see, although you have to get in there and do a little bit of uh, extra work, it's actually not that hard. It's, it's surprisingly easy, in fact. And uh, we'll do that. Okay, and so through the magic of uh, screen casting, I have advanced the installation process. And it is here reminding us to go ahead and uh, either restart or continue to use the CD. Uh, if you're if you're still playing around with the system, or you um, want to keep looking through it or something, you can continue looking through the CD, uh, or using the CD rather, and then when you're finished, uh, you can log out. Um, you'll want to make sure that you uh, eject the CD after you reboot or shut down, uh, because otherwise your computer will boot off the CD again. So. Okay, the machine is now restarting.
Okay, the machine has rebooted, and um, it'll take a moment to uh, get up to speed here. But there we go. Now it's it started the uh, the graphic user interface, and it gives us the prompt to log in. So remember, this is the name and the uh, password that we set during installation. And assuming we know that information, it will kick us into the desktop. So this is the XFCE4 desktop. Uh, again, it, it's pretty, pretty much what we saw before when we were working with the CD, except no installation button. But it, it should look fairly similar. It's got, you know, the usual file manager uh, kind of setup. It's called Thunar. So that's where you'll find all of your data files that you create and save. And then up in the uh, upper left-hand corner, under the little uh, XFCE window, you've got all your system settings, uh, which are fairly similar to the, the normal Ubuntu system settings. And there's a separate screencast on how to kind of customize your your computer, like the desktop and how to get online and things like that. So it's pretty pretty simple and uh, pretty well covered on other screencasts. It, it's more of just an aesthetic thing um, when it comes down to where to find things. I mean, it, it's typically the same idea. There are different programs um, and, all, and all the main programs that you need to to do your, your, your hard work. You know, there's multimedia programs to watch your movies, there's word processing program uh, to, to do, your, do your, um, your office work, to write letters. Just type in a quick note. I don't think I'll save that one. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a really robust system, as you can see. I mean, it's got everything you typically need, and obviously you can always add more with the Synaptic Package Manager, just like in, in Ubuntu. And it's uh, it's attractive and nice, and you'll find that it, just because it is a, a simpler, it doesn't have really any, you know, fancy effects, um, it's not a very complex desktop system, and that just saves a lot of work for your main processor. Uh, it doesn't demand as much out of your system RAM, uh, and you can really, um, I think you'll be amazed at how, I was really pleased at how my, and a very old computer that I had lying around basically with, you know, not really being used, nothing was on it. I threw um, Xubuntu on there and it's just, it runs really well. So let's assume that uh, you have a, a computer so old that that the normal install of XF, uh, of Xubuntu did not work. Uh, in that case, we will shut this down and we'll boot up 